Well, greetings to all of my father's children. It's good to be with you again. I hope you are having a wonderful Wednesday as we have opportunity again to share with you some thoughts along the lines of what God has placed upon us. And we want to certainly continue to be faithful. Oh, by the way, I decided to try to move around on the campus and find some suitable place uh, that I could sit here and uh, have these few moments with you. Um, just trying to do something different, you know, and uh, God has given us the resources and the means to um, try a, a new venue, so to speak. So I hope you okay with this one today. I'm in what we call our uh, serenity room, and uh, it is a room uh, of quietness and for prayer and just uh, allowing the Lord to minister. So today, um, uh, interesting enough, uh, we want to uh, deal with a topic uh, uh, that is very familiar and uh, one of which we are very familiar with. So before we go any further, let us offer a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you again for this another day, this moment in time and place in which you have blessed us to have time together and moments together like this. We ask, O oh God, that you anoint us afresh, that you will anoint the ears, that they might hear eyes, that we might see. Most of all, God, the heart, that we might receive your word and that may find a place that we can apply and we can uh, be and do what you have called us to do by encouraging one another, even as we encourage ourselves. We thank you now. Bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So it was just this morning I was in a conversation with one of our former pastors who used to be a part of the ministry who has um, moved to another pastorate and venue. God is blessing them. In the conversation, uh, once we had talked all that we was going to talk and say what we needed to be said, he inquired about another member of our congregation who has moved on to higher height and inquired of that person in particular, and uh, I began to respond as I, the last time I spoke with him to give a more current update about him, and, and shortly thereafter he made the comment, hmm, I'm going to have to give him a call and encourage him. <laughs> and that did it for me. I was, uh, it, it was affirmed and confirmed for me that I was thinking along those lines but just always trying to find a way to bring it out and have discussions about it and to try to make it real so that, that we can walk together and uh, understand what it really means uh, when we encourage. Here's another one. You ever felt like you was at your lowest point and you just didn't want to do it no more and you just became... Uh, unsettled and frustrated. Um, it just wasn't doing it for you anymore. And you just said, well, at this point, I'm, I'm just going to, yeah, start with a Q. But right at the point as you contemplated or contemplated doing that, you get a phone call or a text. Or maybe they just even decided to show up. <laughs> unannounced <laughs> and said uh, and, and, no, and would say something to the effect I was just thinking about you I was in the area so I thought I'd stop by I just thought I'd give you a text send a text just to let you know that I was thinking about you and I appreciate what you do I appreciate what you do for this home, I appreciate what you do for the community, I appreciate what you do for the ministry uh, so on and so forth and you, you by now, you're ready to make or go through with what you had considered. And that was to just step back. And somebody called and said, I was, I was just thinking about you. I just want to encourage you. That seemed like to me, that would be a moment of being refueled or being inspired. Uh, maybe not thinking so much as to step back now as much as after receiving the encouragement now you want to step forward. And, uh, and so it is in that venue, in that vein today, that I really want to have some discussion. And the reason why 
Also, encouraging or encouragement is the topic for discussion. It's because at 7 o'clock in our Zoom meeting, we're going to be discussing as a continuum of a series of subjects that we've already talked about, and each of them has proven to be very receptive. We've had some good dialogue. We've had some good interaction in regard to what we've been doing for the last uh, couple of weeks on Zoom. But for this night, uh, t uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at this particular topic, encouraging, and what does that mean? Um, I uh, want to put up first, or out front, there's two scriptures that come to mind when we try to uh, build a platform for this discussion uh, centered around encouraging. It's found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse number 28, very familiar that uh, Paul writes to the church at Rome, uh, and in that reference, for we know, we've heard it many times, for we know that all things does work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So in other words, God has a plan, even when the plan doesn't always work out the way we thought it should have. And then could that be in God's preparation or God's approach to getting us to another place in him that he will allow all things, some good, some bad, some indifferent, but whatever God chooses to use to uh, purpose for us to uh, do his will, for we know all things does work together for good to them who love the Lord and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So God has a purpose for all of us. And when we come to the idea of encouragement or encouraging someone else, what is it to encourage? Encourage is the support and love and through words or presence or any means of giving hope to someone who may be at the brink of losing hope or someone who may not be having a good day in all of and and some of their dreams are being shattered by unseen circumstances and things that arise that we don't always see coming and it causes us to um uh to be discouraged and what encouragement does and when encouragement becomes good and wonderful is when others speak words or express words or present themselves by physically showing you how they really feel about you and that whatever you're going through, we're going to help you get through it together. And that's it's what encouraging is really all about. And... Ironic is we tend to think very little of it, uh, or at least sometimes when we know to do it, we think not to do it. Why is that? Do you believe that by encouraging someone that that's not going to encourage them? And I look at, or oh, I'm considering the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity is that every action requires a reaction. Or Galatians 6 and 9, for let us not be see, let us not be deceived in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. And so again, being uh, encouraging and knowing that if we encourage others then that's sort of setting up the stage for someone to encourage us. Um, the law of reciprocity, every action requires a reaction. If we don't do what God has encouraged or suggested that we do for one another, then how is it then we expect someone else to encourage us? And nobody can tell me that you're not changed or you're not touched by the thought of somebody else who thought enough of you to call you or text you and say, I, I was just thinking about you and I just wanted to call and encourage you, not knowing what they might be going through. I know for me, there has been many times when people call me, text me, stop by, show up, 
and say something, uh, I just stop by to encourage you. And that means a lot. And that where I may have been teetering on, uh, throwing in the towel, after that encouragement, I get some energy. I, I get some, some fire. Uh, I receive hope. Uh, I'm inspired now to run on and continue what God has begun in us. What I also wanted to um, make mention about in this conversation with this brother said, I need to call and encourage them. That confirmed it for me as to what we would talk about, as well as looking forward to the engagement with our members who joins us on Zoom and doing very well, I may add. I want to say a special shout out to all of the Zoom joiners of Second Baptist Church. Uh, you cannot begin to know how refreshing it is to see you uh, on Zoom. And as we are able to see each other, I think we are still trying to find ways to collaborate and have discussions and others feeling that they are part of it more so than they uh, would feel like they are not. But I think God has given some uh, views on how we can improve and make it better as we go along, since this is what ministry looks like uh, now that we are at a place uh, in time that this is uh, more safe and more healthy for us to do, to be able to engage one another using social media. Um, I wanted to lift uh, from a... Um, assistant professor who uh, offers some tips or at least 10 highlights of areas to consider when we think about being encouraging to someone else and how we may at least explore some topics or some thoughts uh, under this umbrella. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's several, uh, but I think I'll just maybe pick a few to talk about today. Uh, in fact, let me just name a few uh, from Mr. Joshua Beck's assistant professor, uh, 10 ways or 10 ideals concerning uh, encouragement or encouraging someone else. First of all, he said we have to know what it means to esteem others, to esteem others higher. Um, maybe in another way that's saying look for opportunities to build somebody else up more than look at or look for opportunities to um, not build them up. Uh, we, we, can, uh, we, we can be very different at times, but I believe when we are strong and faithful and connected to the Holy Spirit, then it should be always, or I like to believe that it is always our heart's desire, is to pick up and encourage one another rather than to put down and discourage anybody. I know for me, I don't get any joy out of uh, discouraging anybody. And I know in my best efforts to do so, still we sometimes come up short. But this is where love abides. This is where love makes the corrective action. This is where love covers a multitude of wrongdoing. And then whatever ways in our desire to encourage, what other ways then can we make someone feel that it's not my desire to discourage you, but my aim and my goal and my hope and heart's desire is to encourage you. So uh, Beck offers in that we are to esteem others more than ourselves or see uh, a need or reason to compliment somebody. You may not even think too much of what they're really wearing, but it shows some intent, some effort was made to try to pull it together. At least uh, you, you, we ought to be able to see the effort made <laughs> and then if they're coming up short by we being positive that may inspire them to do a little bit better. I don't know. I think encouragement is a win-win situation. We cannot go wrong when we seek to think of others more highly than ourselves or we seek opportunities and ways to be a blessing and encourage somebody else. Secondly, he says, to be wise in our speech. Be wise in our speech. Uh, could, could it be that sometime we put the car in motion before we engage the clutch 
to synchronize the shifting of the gears, to go into the standard operating transmission, to cause for a easy lift off in moving. All I'm trying to say that sometimes we are so quick to talk and speak before we have considered in listening to somebody else. And all the time, we have already prepared our response before they have even finished what they had to say. <laughs> and so, really here again, we have to be very, and I agree with Beck, that we have to be or have wisdom in our speech. What Another way of saying, think twice. You know, sometime before we speak, give some time to think it through, uh, think it out. Uh, or ask yourself, what if it was me? If this happened, how would I respond to it? You know, go through a medley or a series of uh, a matrix and see how how invaluable and how beneficial it would be if we would pause long enough just to think about what we're going to say and how that's going to be reciprocated or you know sometimes that what we communicate does is not always received in the context in which we sent it <laughs> so we i think beck's view of offering wisdom in speech or having wisdom in how we respond is very very helpful and again all of I'm mentioning or talking about are just areas and ways to encourage someone else. Thirdly, there is what is called being encouraging. That's really what we're talking about. I think that's the highlight of our discussion is to be encouraging. And when the scripture says, the other scripture in Romans 38 and 31, it says, for if God be for us, he is more than the world against us. And I think that's an inherent fact. When we consider whether we will cons uh, encourage somebody else or not, or even if we feel like we need encouragement. And, might I add, we do. Uh, that's just a part of, of human uh, psychology, or at least I, 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 I'm blessed by encouragement. And because I know it's a blessing, so I am uh, always thinking of ways to encourage somebody else. Because again, you can't go wrong. And when we understand Romans 8 and 31, that if God be for us, he is more than the world against us. In other words, we have everything that we need to be self-sustaining and to be self-sufficient because there is no match against God or with God in that if God be for us and he is, or, or at least for those of us who have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, those of us who by adoption have accepted him, uh, if, if, if God be for us and he is, then who in the world can be against us? No one. In other words, God got our back. We, he can't sustain us because there is no match for him. And then because he loves us, he's not going to see harm or anything that would befall us to discourage us unless he is trying to perfect something in us to get us to another place in him. <laughs> you know, God is wonderful and he does not consult us in his ways and approach to get us to the next level. And I believe that this subject matter of encouragement is good for all of us. Even as I share, sit here to have this discussion, I'm even more uh, inspired to want to encourage Someone else. Hmm. Who can I call a text after this is over? <laughs> yeah. Um, be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. I know that's hard for some of us. 
and perhaps we find ourselves in a low place is because we are unwilling. You know, when Jesus talks about if we expect him to forgive us, then we have to understand what it means to forgive others. If we do not forgive others, then we cannot expect God to forgive us. Again, the law of reciprocity. <laughs> Every action requires a reaction. If we do good and so good and speak good and love good, then all of that comes back to us. It's just a matter of time. That's the way God has designed us. So if there are feuds and unsettled matters that, that is still present in our lives with someone who hurt us, betrayed us, I want to suggest that forgiveness for them is not necessarily per se for them as much as it is for you. When I choose to forgive someone, it is because I want to get past. I want to move on. I don't, I don't want to be consumed by these thoughts any longer. And at the point of deciding and choosing with God's help to forgive is eradicated. It no longer bounds me. And this is where the idea of true liberation comes in. Is to be liberated from something that used to bother you. And how do you know that you've been liberated from it? It's now when you are able to talk about that very thing without having the arousal of physical emotion about it, then you know you have been liberated. And then he says, he offers to be understanding, to be understanding. I know sometimes we don't understand everything. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge God and he will direct our path. Yes, he will. The perfect peace of God surpasses all understanding. In other words, we're not ever going to be able to understand everything, but let us try to understand others. Let us try to read beyond the physical of what we see and understand that there is something greater behind what we cannot see. And I think that opens the portal of opening the channels to be understanding or to consider that there may be some reason why one is performing and responding and reacting the way that they are. That's all. Just be understanding. And then he says, zero gossip. Uh-oh, zero gossip. And let me keep others' secrets. Never speak stuff that causes unnecessary hurt to others by speaking unclaimed rumors behind their back. Zero gossip. Moving on. Share knowledge. When I think of the diverse, multiplistic society with everyone having varying abilities and gifts, professors who have learned and acquired the pinnacle of knowledge for their particular field or profession, mechanics that works in the auto mechanic shop that understands their craft. Carpenters knows how to construct and build. We all have our varying gifts. We all have acquired knowledge. And I think most people don't mind sharing their knowledge. But as a way to encourage, let the, the wealth of our knowledge, the accumulation of our knowledge, 
be a blessing to someone else who may be lacking in that particular area. And you will be amazed to how much that inspires and encourages someone to receive the knowledge of someone else who can make life a little bit better. Isn't that what God called us to do? Is to make somebody else's life better? <laughs> and then, eighth, stay humble. Stay humble. Do we understand what that means? I'm sure you do. Can I offer a working definition? Humility and maturity are synonymous. A dignified person accomplishes much, but brags little. They are secure in their standing without needing to make noise. You know anybody like that? Often treating everyone with tremendous respect, regardless of position. That sounds mighty nice. I have given you one-on-one -on -one humility or what it is to be humble. Number nine, be positive. That, that's a big one right there. And try to avoid being around and compassed by such negativity. You know anybody that, that, that seems the majority of the time that they're just negative? They're on a, a negative pursuit that it's always, I, I mean... You don't know anybody like that. Well, perhaps they need encouragement to try and be positive than more so than being negative. And to be positive, positive thinking goes beyond having the drive and motivation for personal success. Positive thinking is explicit. It's definite and outspoken. It's contagious. Yeah, I like that. Build up your loved ones with your positiveness, allowing them to be open for better things to come. I have just decided that next week, I want to finish this up, but next week is going to require all the time to spend on this last one. And that is, yep, love. That, that's how we really, really encourage is when we exhibit and display the agape love of God, then we acquire a need and a desire to want to be encouraging. And we want to give encouragement to all of those who are in need of encouragement. All right, I'm going to shut it down right there. And just say that uh, it's been good today. Join us tonight in our Zoom. We will continue our discussion in it, the Lord's willing, on next Wednesday. We will come back with the final piece of what Mr. Joshua Beck offers in this uh, idea of uh, uh, encouraging one another. So, until then, peace.